lift with a barbell, cutting on the side road, uh, in your Rado Park with one day, they stand in front of you and say that 70 stores later in five different countries. Oh, that's, that's unimaginable. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly what it was says. It's like your gift will make room for you. And your gift is actually what you are called to do on this earth. And once you're able to tap into your gift, eventually you are able to experience things beyond your imagination. From Kona Judah and Debeer, I'm going to see this with you. I'm going to see this with you, formerly known as Razi Matonsel. Bring you a show about creative entrepreneurs live from the landmark that not only birth as a street culture, but also formalize a street hustle. Kona Judah and Debeer, special edition, legendary edition, brought to you by the good folks at Yoko. The brave edition, <laughs> but most importantly, I think one of the most exciting episodes for me personally. We have Sheldon Turchill. I've been looking at this episode. I've been. Yeah. I, I talk to my friends, so I always have like a young list of the people yes. I want to talk to. Yes. And I was like, it's insane that my first introduction of legends was a friend of mine actually yes. going to the academy and eventually being part of the people open the Botswana branch for you guys. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to do so much for your community? I think that's. That's hard for me. I mean, uh, to hear stories like that, to hear people's lives being changed through a gift that has brought us this far. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. It's basically uh, Sheldon having a gift and using the gift to empower and enlarge whichever capacity. If you're looking at, if we're looking at uh, beyond borders and going into other countries and spreading mm -hmm. the word, uh, Sam was actually our first ambassador to go to Botswana and go start our Botswana. Right now, I just actually got on the call with uh, the guy in Botswana. Mm -hmm. He actually has three stores in Botswana and is planning on opening another one uh, by August. So you can imagine the seed that has been planted and the expansion process that continues to take place. And most importantly, the lives that continues to be changed along this journey, which is truly amazing. Mm. I think the one quote I've heard from you across the board is, if you call to do something, it'll come after you. What does that mean for you? Yeah, so so it, I think if you're looking at our, if you're looking at, at the thing that, that you do, that you don't get, that you get paid to do it, but it's not effort. It's effortless, you understand. And I feel that's exactly what it is. And then you understand your calling and then you understand your purpose. Because everyone has a purpose, everyone has a calling. Even if everyone was called to be barbers, then it was going to be customers. Everyone was called to be firemen, then it was going to be nurses and doctors and artists. And, and, and you go on and you go on. And, Everyone has a calling, and I do believe that once you are able to fulfill your calling, things will just fall into place. Uh, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says your gift will make room for you, and your gift is actually what you are called to do on this earth. And once you're able to tap into your gift, eventually you are able to experience things beyond your imagination. Like if I could tell you that uh, would have thought a barber cutting on the side road uh, in your Rado Park with one day they stand in front of you and say that 70 stores later in five different countries oh, that's, that's unimaginable mm -hmm. but that's exactly what it was says it's like your gift will make room for you and, and although and although it might seem impossible that, that once you are just faithful with what you have been trusted with eventually things just begin to unfold it's it's so crazy to me how your story is brave and goes from a high and then you hit your low yeah. for me when i looked at you your story is like 2011 you yes. start the barber shop it's just the barber shop at that stage yes you pack your stuff up and you come back as legends the barber shop yes in 2014 yes. how's it been in these 10 years and these 70 stores later wow it's been amazing. <laughs> what a roller coaster journey. I mean, uh, yeah, there's, and you spot on that was one of our lows right there. Uh, so, just to paint the story for you, I actually came back from honeymoon. I had a partner back then in 2011. Just got married. Uh, part 
partner assured me that I should go away, everything is under control. And I came back from honeymoon six days later, doors were closed and disappointed, obviously, uh, standing in front of closed doors. Like, maybe this should have just stayed a, 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 a dream, it shouldn't have been a reality. And just there and then I left Bavarian, I just stopped cutting it. I was like, nah, this is not for me. This is not, this is not, uh, this is not, not something that, that I think I can make a career out of. And uh, uh, there, afterwards, continued working in a job uh, that never gave much fulfillment, but I just used that as a stepping stone. And eventually, it's, once you know you you are doing the right thing is when people are constantly asking for you, when people are constantly requesting for you, when people are constantly asking Sheldon, when are you coming back? When are you going to do this thing again? Mm-hmm. And uh, want you and then I made a decision back in twenty fourteen to resign from my day job and take it on and just go at it full force. Uh, obviously it wasn't as easy as as it sounds. Uh, Started out at one shop, uh, had a couple of betrayals again. Mm. It's 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 a constant roller coaster. You understand? Because dealing with people is not the same like dealing with products. You know your products. You can you can flip products, and you don't have much much uh, much human capital. But in the business that we are in, is a service orientated business. So you're constantly dealing with people, and you must be able to lead people in the right direction. And uh, sometimes people don't understand the vision and and get sidetracked by wanting to pursue their own own thing on the side. And and those are the constant adversities that we had to face in our mm. business, where we had to face with people turning against us, starting their own business, taking customers from us. And it was a constant challenge that we had to go through. But I think it it's that challenges that actually brings you and shows you what you are capable of. I mean if you are if you're unable to go through a challenge and and obstacles like that, you won't be a legends power today. You understand? It's it's those things that actually make you uh, like, for example, like uh, I know I'm going to make a lot of reference to the Bible because I constantly read Bible and yeah. like like for example, like if you look at David, for example, King David, uh, if he never faced a Goliath, uh, we were not speaking about David today. You yeah. understand? And and so many other great people out there. You have to be able to face the challenge head on and say, you know, th- these are the challenges that I'm going through, but I'm going to face it head on and eventually we'll come on top. You come out on top. Yeah. Because these franchises, yeah. a new mall is opening. That means a new legends is opening. Yeah. <laughs> you use Yoko across the board. What was the decision making to say, there's all these other companies. I'm yeah. using Yoko. This is my yeah. pay gate. Yeah. Now, nah, Yoko, Yoko, we've, we've been with Yoko since 20, 2015, 2016, 2016 we've been with Yoko, so we were, we, we were fortunate to be the early on boarders and, and we understand the revolution that Yoko has done throughout the game. Uh, looking at the things that implemented was actually the suggestions that we had from our side as to why not add this, mm. subtract this, maybe do this. and. And for them to listen to us and to implement these changes said so much to us and just built some sort of a trust towards us as a brand, you understand? And I think that's what it is. If 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 a company as big as Yoko is able to, to take a step back and say, you know, let us listen to our consumers, let us hear what they want, their needs, let's tailor solutions based on what they're currently facing, then then Bob's uncle, that's that's exactly what we need in our society, especially starting up as small businesses and scaling to the next level. Uh, and as as of today as well, we're currently still speaking to Yoko. We're currently still looking at ways and means of how we can uh, optimally work together and come up with solutions 
that will not only impact our business, but a business that has scaled as much as Legends is? Mm. I think the scale of Legends hit me. I had the privilege to go to the head office. Yes. I was at the head office for Keto Launch. Right? Oh, nice, nice. So I'm at the launch, you're giving the speech, I'm down there, you're at the top. <laughs> We're looking, it's like, it's this beautiful moment where your office also embodies the company culture of a barbershop yes. on arrival as you enter the space. What's that journey like? Because for a lot of young creators, for a lot of young entrepreneurs, they're looking at it like, you're talking about 70 stores. What, what yeah. was that journey like to say, year one, we only had one store, but by the end of year one, we had our second store. Yeah. What's that transition like for you, for that mentality you were in? To yeah. say, yeah, no, within the first year, we'll get a franchise in. Yeah, no, no. No, thanks for that. Thanks for that. I never knew that you were there actually. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's so crazy. That's so crazy. Yeah, so we do have a head office in uh, in Northlands Lego Park. And our head office basically, uh, as you said, embodies the culture of legends. And every time I hear people come into the office, they say exactly that. The culture that you can feel from the office translates down to the stores and and, and that's exactly the, the message that we want to portray towards everyone in the organization. Uh, that it's not open, like it's much more of coming together and sharing ideas as to how can we make legends great. I think uh, starting out with one store, uh, the story of, of, I always wanted five stores. There was, there was this, this whole, a vision that I had from 2014 was to open five stores and the reason why five stores because because you know when you put things in and you're like you know what I can open a store in Joburg, Pretoria, uh, Durban, Cape Town you understand so it's yeah. like so it's like you're already plotting it uh, beforehand and uh, and before you know it it's like those those five stores were were never the case it was actually destined to be something bigger than than what we envisioned. Uh, and 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 that's that's exactly uh, if you put if, just think about it, if you constantly put limitations in for yourself and 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 limiting yourself to X amount of stores or X amount of locations, uh, you never know what's a potential. You never know if this thing is going to take off to 200, 300, or 1,000 stores, you never know, you understand? It all depends on, it really all depends on what the capability is from the team and what are we able to manage. And I think that's that's exactly what it is because if you're able to take care of the little, you are able to be entrusted with much. And it's a continuous journey, just being able just to go after that. I think now our focus is, uh, has shifted much more where we, where we're not fixated on the number of stores, we're much more focused on the customer experience. And the customer experience, uh, when I say this, is that we want our customer to have the best experience when they walk into the store, from front of house till having the power experience, till, till, till interacting, uh, wherever that person goes and cuts their hair, they must know that they feel at home and as a relationship between legends and themselves. There's, there's a bond that they have. And, and I think that's our main emphasis right now. Obviously stores will open, we will open stores, but it's not something that we were fixated in. And, it's, and I would say our focus has shifted so much just to be customer centric. Mm -hmm. The focus shifts to customer centric. I think the one thing we were talking about with my friends the other day, because yeah. every time I go home, it's when I finally cheat on my barber. Yeah. I'm going to Legends, the specific person I love at Legends, yes. right? So I'm looking at it and I was explaining, he's like, so why Legends? Why specifically Legends? I'm yeah. like, yo, I think Legends has figured out the method that McDonald's figured out, where it's like yeah. universally, a Big Mac is a Big Mac. Yeah. So a cut of Legends is a cut of Legends overall. Yes. So to touch on the point of you guys focusing on the experience, I think it's very evident even for yeah. us as consumers. Yeah, Whereas like when I go to Rose Bank, it's the same experience. When I go yes. to PE, it's the same experience. Yeah, what fuels you to continuously want to create more opportunities for other people? Because a lot of people yeah. make money and they sell off. Yeah, yeah. I think it's people. I think I think that's that's exactly what it is. I think uh, just looking at just looking at the 
uh, what we're going through in our in our country, the mm -hmm. problems that we're facing. Uh, if you look at youth unemployment that continues to rise beyond beyond forty percent, uh, which is which is really scary to think about. You yeah, understand, and 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 if you look at uh, young people are too too afraid to start their own businesses, too afraid to to kickstart uh, something that they think might might work or might not work. So I think that's that gives me a greater purpose much right now as we sit here and and it's just to have an impact on people's lives. Uh, at our training center, one thing that we do, so we train barbers to work at Legends uh, and that's obviously feeds through our whole Legends ecosystem. But another thing that we also do is that we train guys to actually start up their own barbershops, to start up their own salons. Uh, we do this and we actually upskill them from financial literacy to entrepreneurship training to having the full, to being so equipped that they are able to start their own business within the communities and we had a lot of success stories because we constantly mentor these guys within the locations. We have guys starting barbers, barbershops at, in the garage at their home, as I understand. And, and, and being able to engage with them on a continual basis and to find out how are they doing, how are they marketing themselves, how are they getting the word, the word out there. I mean, like, that for me is fulfillment because now you, the impact that you're creating is that you're leaving, you are creating so many shellmans out there, you mm. understand, that are able to tap into this industry and, and be able to, to, to you know, scale into something that could be something great one day. And I think that's that's fulfillment for me. Mm. It's so insane, like your story, like when I look at it, all these pockets, you, you started as a service company, mm -hmm. you guys are now integrating and graduating to a product yeah. company. Yeah. How's that been where you were like, okay, we test, pro we test running this product, it actually yeah. makes waves. Yeah. We package this product, we found the right packaging. It actually does waves. <laughs> and, and now we, we've entered this new milestone where we finally have distribution nationwide. Yes. How's yes. that for you? How, how do you even get to that stage? Because yeah. a lot of us, there's a lot of young creatives and entrepreneurs who are looking at yeah. us like, yo, I figured out the right way to do this little bump. Yes. How do I get it distributed at that yes. scale? Yes, yes, yes. It's hard work, huh? It's definitely hard work. It's being able to knock on those doors. Uh, when nobody actually wants to hear you out, it's it's. I think I think I think this is the thing I uh, was in, and I didn't tell you this. I don't I don't hold a degree. I don't hold a a uh, a honors or MBA or something like that. But but one thing that I always tell my team is that I'm I'm one of the most hardest workers people out there. That says you know I need to go out and need to get things done. I need to go and need to go work. And that's exactly what young people need to do. Uh, a degree just gives you, an, it just upskills you in one sort, you understand? But you need the work ethic to, that goes along with it. And, and to get our products in retail is, is definitely hard work. It's, it's not child's play. It's not, it's not something that you can just develop a product at home and just send it to any retail store and, mm. and hopefully cross your fingers and and they'll accept it. It doesn't work that way. You have to constantly uh, engage with these guys and constantly prove to them that why you need to be in the stores. And, and while you're in, in the stores, sales need to prove that you are actually worthy of being in the stores and constantly selling. So it is a lot of hard work that goes into it. And, and I definitely think that uh, it is possible. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but, but, but it takes a lot of work. Mm. Now you're in the retail store, you have to prove sales, which means you have to start marketing the whole product. Yes. How's that been developing a team that markets this product that's based off this one experience at a shop? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. So then you have your sales, merchandisers, you have people going into products, doing activations in stores, you have, you have people actually, actually on social media, mm -hmm. uh, brand ambassadors, influence, talking about the product telling people that they can get the product at this particular outlet and it encompasses everything together. So it's not only just one sort of, of way of communication and uh, it goes all together. So now your communication that you stem out uh, has to be everything in total and not only because 
You know, like in a barbershop, you can only serve X amount of people per day, but in the stores, in the retail, your job is to outsell uh, whichever amount of items is in that store. So that's exactly what a goal is, and just trying to do that on a constant basis at all stores. So you can imagine we had, we had Tascam, we had Clicks, we have uh, products in uh, Spa, we have products uh, recently in Markham's, TFG. So there's constantly activations, awareness, there's constantly things that's happening just to create the customer, just to get the customer to, to test, feel, taste the product in store. How do you manage these expectations? Because now all these distributors want this, right? Yeah. They know how much stock they want. Yeah. And when distributors stock, they're not stocking a hundred. Mm. They're stocking thousands of yes. these things because they're buying well in advance and then you have to do your cost things for yeah. they want to put on a special, etc. etc. Yeah. How are you managing? Because there's a, a friend of mine, uh Mauta, you run Swank, yes. your brand, right? Yes. So his chat was like, you have to look at it from a, a, a big scale where it's like you guys have to ship this product in wherever it's being made. How are you handling those stocks, all those things, yes. customs when it comes to play, and then also still storing it and distributing it within the local region? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the whole the whole value system, the whole uh, yeah, yeah, the whole value system from point A to point B is is so integral because if you look at the product itself, the product comes in where it comes from the manufacturer, uh, locally or internationally. Uh, being able to have that product come in a specific time period uh, and meeting the demand from retail because if you don't meet the demand from retail in a specific time period you're being penalized mm -hmm. because you're unable to supply on time uh, that's the one thing the other thing is uh, understanding that the logistics of that particular product needs to needs to be managed in a, in a certain way that that all these these resellers are supplied on a regular basis and it's on a monthly basis. So you have to have a team in place. You, you definitely have to have a team that is capable of doing this, uh, of basically being able to uh, constantly, um, constantly engage with suppliers and engage with resellers. So there's a whole system that takes place in order for you to constantly be on top of it. Because if you're not on top of it, uh, then things just fall out of place. But you have to be constantly on top of it. And, and that's exactly what we do. Uh, we have experts in place that has experience in the retails mm. and understands what the expectation is. Mm. How do you redevelop your trust? Because a lot of us, we get burnt once and yes. we're like, it's enough now. Yes. The second time you go in a caution, but even that caution is also not allowing that relationship to grow and blossom. How have you redeveloped your trust when you've had a couple of bad experiences that probably probably weighed down everything you had believed in at that stage. Yeah, that's so powerful. That's so powerful, and and I think uh, trust translates to your brand as well. Because if a brand is built on trust, and uh, and and you know one of the major things of having a reputable brand is that customers will come back to you once, twice, price maybe, but if you constantly disappoint them and if you're constantly not meeting expectations, uh, then they tend to look for options other way. And I think, I think that's, that's the most challenging part is to ensure constantly that you service this pers person, but you actually, actually exceeding the expectations on a regular basis. And that's something that, that, that we focus on in our, our business because, because because as you know, we are barbers, we do make mistakes, uh, but to understand, to be able to serve customers consistently and on a regular basis takes a lot of work, you understand, and, and you need to be able to manage your staff in some sort of way to align them with the culture of the business and, and make them understand the full bigger picture that it's not only about that, because if that customer leaves from their chair and go tells 10, 20 people about the experience that they had, mm -hmm. uh, it actually, it actually, it actually diminishes uh, the brand, the brand value right there. Mm -hmm. How did you figure your unique selling point? There's all these barbershops in the world. Yeah. There's all these barbershops where you grew up in your neighborhood. 
Yes. How did you know that this is what makes the legends unique? Yeah, I know that's a very good question. So, so back when I started out on the side of the road, um, there was a barber across the road from me that was cutting hair. And, um, and as you know, in Yalos, there's so many barbers and there's a barber right across the road from him. And uh, I always wondered what makes me so special. Why is people coming to queue here and trying to get their haircuts at, at my particular chair? And I went to this guy's done some, some investigation and just to see what they're doing. And to my realization that it was just a monitor transaction for them. It was just cut your hair, finish, done, next customer, cut your hair, finish, done, next customer. And it's then when I realized what was my unique selling proposition. What I actually done was that uh, I had a notebook and a pen and I would take note of each and every customer that said, seated on my chair so once I was done with your service I would write down the wazi and this is the conversation that we had. Oh is that why every and legend takes down your information? Yeah, yeah. So Crazy. so then we used to so that's exactly what it is. So we write down that conversation, write down that particular uh, topics, key topics that that was that we spoke about during our haircut. And next time you would come back and come sit on my chair we, we would pick up from that particular conversation. I imagine, I imagine next time I come sit in my chair and I make reference to, to how, how did your interview go with Shalom? How did that go? You understand? And, mm. and, and now you feel much more a sense towards your barber because your barber is actually recognizing you as a person and remembering uh, what you told him the last time. And it goes beyond just the haircut. And it's true that anyone can give a haircut, anyone, anyone can give the same service, but it comes down to the relationship element. And, and right now, our systems are definitely that, uh, like you mentioned, uh, we will take, take, your, take your details down and, and just, just, make, just make references on the type of conversation that you had with your barber. And, and next time you come in and it's like, you know what, uh, how did you know that I like that? How did you know that? Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. Just trying to, trying to be much more on it in terms of building that relationship, that connection for us is so valuable. Mm. Legends has developed this beautiful relationship with music and musicians overall. Mm. We saw what your first franchise been with Eric, and then you had Caesar Lisa, and then you have partnerships with Kiddo, mm. and, and, and Andrew has played music at every store. Yeah. What, what's the plan with music? What's, what's <laughs> <the plan? laughs> no, I think, I think we've, we've been part of the culture from the, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy how we got, got so engraved into the culture because, because a lot of brands would want to be part of the culture. I mean, it's, it's, it's something where brands grow and they're like, you know what, we need to tap into the culture. We need to be part of this. Whereas I feel like the legends has grown with the culture from the beginning. You understand? Legends was part of the festivals that happened in your Bramfontein, the, the, the street parties that constantly happen, you understand? So, so being part of this whole cultural element speaks synonymous towards the brand and the credibility of the brand. And, and that's, that's, that's it's interesting that you mentioned is that that the music plays such a big part in it and and it's not only music it's artistry it's 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 people that 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 feel a test to the brand so you know this brand is actually part of our circle and and that's amazing that that we are truly humbled to have shared uh platforms with with the likes of uh ricky rick casper uh, all the hip hop artists that you can think about back in the day, all the house kids, all our, all our, all the all the piano kids, you understand? So, so we are truly, truly humbled to be able to be part of these circles because it makes such a huge difference with uh, within our brand as well. What does it mean for you to see? all these businesses grow, all these ideas be implemented, to see this thing grow. 
because a lot of us we do things and because we focus on tomorrow we never get to reflect yeah. if you given yourself the opportunity to look back at like yo 2011 yeah. i said it's enough yeah. 2024 i think yeah. i have more than enough <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's uh, I think I think I actually took some time this year to start reflecting because we uh, I think we were constantly building 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 and constantly going up the next shop the next idea the next thing where it's like now I'm actually taking some time out there and actually realizing you know what we've actually come a long way uh, we've actually done X amount of things and 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 looking at the journey alone has been truly, truly humbling. Uh, uh, I, was, I was basically just looking at the images of, of the time when we started out, the time when we launched, our first events that we attended, our first products that we launched, uh, the training centers that we opened, uh, first international shops, all of these milestones that we've done over this past 10 years it's truly inspiring and it's truly humbling to know that uh, ideas that that basically became a reality but also using baby steps in the process to make things come to pass and doing it the right way uh, is just to understand that, that dreams definitely do come true. How do you stay grounded? Because yeah. we get we get 1,000 likes. <laughs> we get 1,000 likes, we enter the shop, we don't greet anymore, <laughs> we don't care anymore. You, you just move, uh, you just change a thousand lives in two years. Uh, How do you stay grounded? I think uh, my faith. My faith keeps me grounded. Uh, my faith keeps me grounded and every single day I'm reminded of it's never about myself. It's always about the purpose that I've been entrusted with. Uh, and most of the time we, we tend to forget it. Most of the time we see it to be all about us, but everything can be gone in an instant. Uh, but if you're not grounded in your faith, if you're not grounded in spirituality of having to say, no, this is everything that has been achieved. It's not through me or for me, but it has been that I'm a vessel to enable to to touch so many people's lives through the gift that God has given them to me. Mm. Your vessel, you play a role, you help mm. others, you help yourself. What's your words for the youth? The words for the youth is stay curious. Uh, we spoke about it earlier and it doesn't mean that uh, when you when you finish school, when you finish varsity, when you're done doing what you're supposed to do, that learning stops there. You have to stay curious. I mean, off, off topic, we spoke about Pharrell, about how he's constantly learning, how he's constantly exploring. There's always something out there to learn, I understand. And, and whatever you do, uh, be the master at it. Uh, let anyone know you to be this guy is for this particular thing, you understand? And, and, and once you are able to become the master of what you do, then people will start entrusting you, not that you know everything and you can do any and everything. Like, I'm not a carpenter, I'm not a, I'm not a technician, I'm just a barber, you understand? So it's like, be the best at what you can do and know your industry throughout. Uh, and the last piece of advice is that um, manage what you have been entrusted with. So, for example, if you've been entrusted with somebody's uh, somebody's uh, work or with somebody's if somebody has entrusted you maybe to do a job, uh, do that job to the best of your ability uh, because it's a test that you go into because you never know when is your opportunity to give a job to someone else. So definitely ensure that you manage correctly because sometimes as youth and as people we just tend to mismanage things because it's not ours uh, and and the most important advice will be that manage what you have been entrusted with mm -hmm. you've made it this far what are the sacrifices you'd say you've made for, you've made for the business a lot <laughs> <laughs> 
my life. <laughs> uh, it's a lot. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, 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 the things that I wish I would have, and you know, you always hear this from entrepreneurs that has gone through so many things and and the thing that they often say is that they wish they had spent a bit more time with the kids and that's exactly how it feels i don't know it's like it's like it's like one of those things where you're like no i wish i could have been more present when my kid was starting to walk i wish i could have been more there when when things could have happened and you understand just just be more present in these experiences because when you start out the business, it takes so much of you and, and so much is demanded from you because when you start out, you can imagine you do everything. You do everything from finance to marketing <laughs> to, you understand, you have every single thing that's on your plate and, and you, you hardly focus on the things that really matter in life. And I think... Uh, just being present in the lives of my family. That's something that I wish I would have done a bit more. But yeah, I, I don't regret any of the experiences that I've gone through. Mm. You're staying committed, you're staying yes. building, you're staying empowering people. Firstly, thank you for coming here. Secondly, thank you to Yoko for making this possible. Because <laughs> yes. I looked at it and I was like, this is the one. <laughs> this, like, when I tell you how many times I've seen you, yes. and I just like being the fly on the wall, like I saw you at the, funny enough, a lot of people who don't know this, is yes. that at some stage when you were coming back to being a barber, you were starting, you were doing it on a motorcycle, yes. like you were uber barber. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. Right. Right. Before it was yeah, a thing. Yeah, and then right. when that clicked in my head from all the interviews I've watched of you in the past, is that I think two weeks ago when yes. there was the activation in Brahm, Yes. You guys had the bus, and yeah. I was like, it's kind of insane that you have this bus activation, and at some stage in 2012, this was the dream to this just have a big bus yeah. that people can cut their hair yeah. over. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's literally so crazy. Like, during that time when I was cutting hair on the bike, uh, being able to go home and go sketch the bus, and so I was like, it's 2013, so many years after the bus has been launched, five years later and and that's that's the power of just having a dream putting things on paper and just seeing it come into fulfillment mm. I'd like to close this off with saying do not let your hands be idle yes thank you thank Sheldon you. thank you very thank much thank you very much a legendary episode <laughs> by Yoko.